Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes. These books talk about every week I speak to various authors who are behind life transforming books as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on the station this and every Saturday at 4:30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Hello and welcome to the Writer's Blog Talk Show. This is a program that is designed to promote authors, Ghanaian authors, and of course their works. We are also seeking to promote other stakeholders within the publishing industry. We are proudly supported by La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Concilio, Carries Books, Anyedu, Ako Books Audio, Challenge Enterprises of Ghana, FC Beauty, My Makeup is by Kainket CFC Beauty. Of course, media partners, Sunny FM and Sunny TV. Today, I'm wearing Vic Hack fashion. You can find them at uh, Domic Pillar 2, adjacent Mount can Zion. Can I get something to wear too? <laughs> yes, you can, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Number on your screen now, you can give them a call. So it is 46-860-604. Now, today... I have been graced, I mean honored, it's a privilege for me to interview Professor Emeritus Stephen Ade. When we are back from this break, we'll get talking about his three books. Now this is a, a two-part interview today. Um, the first book is The Gimper Story, how it all began, the reforms that he brought in. And of course, these two fantastic books as well, Living by Strategy. And then a sequel to that, Managing Your Life. I'm Vicky Amwa. When we are back, we'll get talking to him. Stay with us. Hi, children. Are you ready for this year's edition of the Kiddie Book and Crafts Fair? Yeah! Well, the Kitty Book and Crafts Fair is finally here. Challenge Enterprises of Ghana and the Writer's Blog brings you the 2022 edition of the Kitty Book and Crafts Fair. This is a gathering of children of diverse ages from different schools and backgrounds in one place. There will be art and craft, reading, writing, intellectually stimulating games, audiobook listening sessions, and a lot and lot of fun. Date is 4th August 2022. It's a holiday! Call now and register your children. Parents, you are not left out in this edition. There will be parental workshop for available and willing parents. So go on and register today. 0208-428-322. That is 0208-428-322. What's more, there will be several competitions with lots and lots of prizes to be won. Don't miss out. The Kiddie Book and Craft Fair 2022. Creativity, knowledge, power. Asante from Anyedu. Anyedu is a children's company, a multimedia children's company that wants to help parents to raise successful and blessed kids. We believe that all children have potential and it has to be unleashed. So we are helping parents to unleash this potential and especially for us as Africans, we believe that this is our time, this is when we can make an impact in this world. We want to raise a new generation of 
strong, confident, bold um, African children who would change the world, change the narrative of an African in the world. We are starting from Ghana. We are hoping that we will be able to reach the whole of Africa and let the children know that, look, they can do anything that they want to do because through Christ, all things are possible. Welcome back. This is the Writer's Blog Talk Show. Thank you so much for joining in. Remember that we are powered by Reveal Multimedia, an outfit that is out there to help you, the author. PR services for authors. If you're you know, out with a book, you want it launched, uh, we've got you covered. Editing, proofreading, all of that, uh, we can sort you out. Number on your screen, just call um, and get in touch with us. Our quote for today is by Jeffrey Gettemore. It says, obstacles can't stop you. Problems can't stop you. Most of all, other people can't stop you. Only you can stop you. And I think this great man I'm about to talk to um, has proven beyond doubt that there's nothing you cannot achieve so far as God is with you and you set your mind to it. So I'm here with Professor Emeritus Stephen Ade. He, uh, he's a professional teacher with Certificate A. He is an economist, uh, BSc, MSc, PhD, all of that. Um, he is the oldest chartered marketer in Ghana. Um, once or two times president of CIMG, currently the patron of the same institution. He's a qualified marriage counselor um, and also a theologian. He's an author of over 23 books. Um, we have some cooking for children. I'm excited about that one. Of course, he is a professor of economics and leadership. Um, that's PhD, also doctor of letters, which was conferred on him recently. It's an honor to have you with us, Prof. Emeritus Stephen Ade. <laughs> I Hi. do hope you're doing very, very well. So far, so good. <laughs> Thank God. You know, uh, one question that's been on my mind as I go through all these books that um, you launched these three books this year, right? Yes. The Gimper yes. Story, Managing Your of, Life. A couple of months ago. A couple of months ago. So did you ever see yourself come this far um, growing up? Uh, not much. I mean, if you come from that hole, you don't want to When you are able to get to middle school, you think you have done a, a lot. Mm. But of course, I mean, few children, if any, can tell what they will be at the age of 73 going to 74. So. Yeah. But how was life like growing up for you? Very good fun. All the things I loved were there. There was uh, Ampesi, Coco. <laughs> there was a lot of fufu. Every day for my first 15 years, we ate fufu for dinner. Except one day when I lost an older half brother, that was a serious wow. fighting, a uh, fasting, not eating <laughs> for, for for that tragedy. For that day, wow. So, I mean, so far as we were concerned, it was a typical village life. All of us would have our meal in the night, go and play in the street under the moonlight. Mm. We all slept in darkness, so therefore nobody had a light and we were in <laughs> darkness. So it was. Um, for your, your standard, you say that it was uh, a life of poverty, but uh, I enjoyed myself. I, I really enjoyed growing up. Education. Um, I see how you value education. How was it like for you back then? Well, I very now when you we were young. Actually, I nearly missed primary school because my father wanted me to join him in going to the farm. It nearly caused a trouble for my 
mother's marriage, but she insisted that she go to primary school. In mm -hmm. my village, the highest you could go is primary six. And interestingly, when you pass primary six, there was only one middle school in the nearby village of Brofiedru. Mm -hmm. And there will be about eight primary schools all around. And you go and sit for entrance examination. And they can wow. take only a maximum of 46 people. So it means that for about half of the people, if not more, that's the end. Primary school will finish. Mm. But I got in. We were three from my village. It's a small village. So in, when I was in primary six, we were only three people. Stephen Ade, John Edu, and Ima were in cancer. So we knew everybody's position. <laughs> Every year, it would be Stephen Ade first, Ima were in cancer wow. second, and then George Edu last. Where are the, the two? Are you in touch with them all? One had died. One is not doing too well. Oh. He stayed in the village, never went beyond standard 10th grade. Got into alcoholism a little bit and uh, mm. old and really, the last time I went to see him, not doing that great. Mm. But uh, there are three of us, so that's, then you go to middle school from form four to form four. So that's mm. how the local um, certain was yeah. like for you but um, we all know you um, well at least I know you uh, it's because I'm young <laughs> I know you by virtue of Gimpa I came to hear about you by virtue of Gimpa in this book the Gimpa story what was it before um, the Gimpa uh, story well unfortunately Ghanaians uh, know me more about for Gimpa mm -hmm. which I'm proud of for what we did there okay but Gimpa was my quote unquote post retirement <laughs> job. Okay. I was I was fifty one years when I came to Gimpa. I'd been just for a short stint a uh, middle school teacher in a very interesting town. They used to be called Edianiede. Food the sweet. <laughs> now they have changed the name three miles from Obuasi to Odumasi. Oh. Then after my first degree I joined, I went and did my master's and came straight away at 25 to join the now Ghana Investment Promotion Center. It used to be called Capital Investments Board. I was there for 12 and a half years. Wow. In between, of course, I took some time to do my PhD, but altogether, 12 and a half years, rose to the level of deputy director and head of research. I then, 85, I got a job which I, went, I took it up early, 86, with the Commonwealth Secretariat in London as an economic advisor, a senior economist. After three years, I got a, another job at the UNDP New York as a senior economist. And, but within two years, they converted me to a mainstream. I mm. became the chief of the uh, directorate of the African Bureau. And later on, uh, for a brief period during the transition of South Africa, I was sent as the head of the UN system in South Africa, uh, like the ambassador and coordinator of the UN activities in the country. And um, I spent four and a half years as UN representative and ambassador to Namibia. Four and a half years to be exact. Wow. Then, honestly, I got fed up with being a diplomat. <laughs> I mean, I like the action type of thing. So okay. basically, I was into being a diplomat, though we, from dealing with development, wasn't my cup of tea. Hmm. So I decided to resign to the shock of many at the age of 50. I decided to, but then it requires some time. You have to, at my level of a director, you have to give not less than six months notice and the rest. So 1999, December, I then also applied for Gimpa. I got the job and I resigned and came. I arrived on 24 December 1999 for Christmas in Hiromwasi. <laughs> That's my village. I came in the night and then I drove the next morning to Hiromwasi for Christmas with all my family for about a week. And then on 1st of January 2000, I took over as the Director General of Gimpa, Ghana Institute of Management and public administration. At that time, it was solely a public service training institution. Mm, mm. So sometimes people get confused. Why were you a director general and rector? Mm, director yeah. In other words, I was acting the servant director general. Then during our transformation, it became a full-fledged public university. And I became the, the first, first rector. rector. So that's how it is. So Wonderful indeed. So we are here with Professor Emeritus Stephen Adair. He has done quite a lot. Um, 74 this year. 
and counting. Um, yes. So this is the 74 in December, in not December. yet. Yes. Don't question me. <laughs> I have a few more years, only 40 or 43 years before I die. He said he's actually in his youth, said, yeah, and yeah, I believe yeah. it. He's more energetic than he can think about. Actually, I thank God that at my age, mm. I am as strong as I was 25 years. So, so what, 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 what is the secret then? I think it's more by grace than anything else because, you know, compared to my wife, who has had some health challenges, he has done everything that you, he doesn't like meat, fatty things, anything, okay. everything that will kill you. Me, I chop them all. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that genetic, my father lived to 115 years. Okay. Yeah, my metabolism, it seems everything I eat <laughs> passes through. So we must be very careful when uh, we are age. There are some godly and nice people who have died earlier. In fact, mm. during the past three years, thanks to COVID, mm -hmm. I've lost some good friends and holy men mm. like, you know, People will talk by heart, but a person like Justice Mafu Sao, one of the holy men I know of who lived. And people think that, you know, if he makes a judgment not in their favor, they can insult him by heart. Mm. My own best man, Dr. Alexander Abouadje, and so many of them. And sometimes I wonder why God is favoring me and keeping me here from people who are uh, more godly and everything else. So sometimes you must be very careful of trying to. Mm. Find. So always I'm asking God, what is to be done now? Because <laughs> why am I being kept here when others have been called? My own dear sister has just been called home to be with the Lord, Araba Sefadidi. You, oh. And many Ghanaians know her. Yeah. I'm mean, probably the top most psychologist and a Christian yeah. woman, a, f a wife of my best friend. Mm. Uh, Professor Sefadidi. So, I thank God for that, but I don't it's think that grace. I cannot, yeah. Because the type pure of things, grace. even this morning, I've eaten uh, fufu and some sort of, you know, goat <laughs> meat it's for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> we want to enjoy this grace so. <laughs> but the, Kim, the Gimpa story, um, it's about, I think, three ten pages. Oh. Um, and the subtitle says, Transforming a Public Service Training School into a Self-Financing University Leadership Management and Administration in Ghana. One of the things that really um, got me, you know, from the very early pages of the book is how you entered in. <laughs> um, and where you, the subtitle for that particular heading is, The Impudence of a Sick Cockroach. <laughs> And where, you know, you came in to be interviewed and, you know, as daring as you are, you just threw some questions at them. I want us to start off with that before we go for our very first break. Remember, we are here with Professor Emeritus um, Stephen Aday and we're discussing from his first book. Remember, it's a two-part interview. This one is titled The Gimpa Story. So, Prof, how was it like, I mean, entering in? How did you get into Gimpa? in the very first place. <laughs> Actually, from my point of view, it was so casual because I hadn't made up my mind that I want to come to Gimba. What I had decided was that God wanted me to come to Ghana. Okay. Leave the UN okay. and come After and resigning. help. And come to okay. So, with no job in view. And it was just coincidental that during whilst I'd made up my decision, about four months before this interview, Alan Chira Martin, mm -hmm. she wasn't Alan Kashian. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, a staff of the, a national staff of the UN. Okay. And he was in charge of a program called Empretech. So oh. he was going around the African countries and came to Namibia and being the head of the UN, I was his host. Okay. And of course I knew him okay. from uh, our days when he was working as N NDPI. So therefore, we knew each other. So you are colleague, mm -hmm. Ghanaian. So of course, I hosted him as I have hosted any other UN expert visiting Namibia. Okay. So when he was coming, uh, yes, I said, oh, Alan, within a year, I'm coming back to Ghana. I've decided that I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. God wants me to be home. That's it, casual. Then some months later, 
One day he I got a call from him. He said, Steve, is it are you serious that you are coming to Ghana? I said, Yeah. I've seen an advert for Gimpa, Director General. Maybe you'll be interested in. Pardon my language, because friends, you know, we talk. <laughs> I said, oh, Faso, I don't know how you can say it in English. <laughs> but, you know, don't bother me. Have I told you to look for a job mm, for yeah. me? God had so arranged that another mutual friend of the two of us was sitting in front of me. I'd engaged him on a contract in Namibia and okay. sitting at my desk in my office. Okay. And the UN, we says, oh, Mr. De, whom are you saying this to? Because he knew that the person would be a Ghanaian <laughs> and must be an acquaintance for a diplomat to use this <laughs> undiplomatic language. <laughs> and I say, oh, and I'll answer Chiramati. Also, I heard Mama me. My cousin Pedro Mario. This friend took the phone from me. You know, the old phone, whereby it is there, you ring it. So he took the phone. Okay. And he says, Alan. And then they talk. Uh, all that I heard him tell Alan. He said, you leave it to me. Actually, technically, the letter was drafted with this guy. He says, you are going to write it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> wow. And then he says, give me your CV. And the you and our CVs are not this academic one of you write 100, 100 articles and books and other things. No, our CV is just one page. That's all. Straight to the point. You know, just about two Some paragraphs, shells. who you are. So that's what I gave him. And then uh, he brought it. That's all. Uh, he, tells, he told me later that he came and went to Achimota Post Office where Gimpe's box is. And went to, to post, post it there, there so that you can come quickly. back. <laughs> to my surprise, within two weeks, I, hit, I got a call from the secretary, the registrar, to say, Charlie, if you are interested in the job, <laughs> we need a little bit more about you. At least, can you send us <laughs> a sample of your articles and books? Because in our you and you write your mm -hmm. books, you are written. Mm -hmm. Who cares? <laughs> so I told my secretary, please, can you just go through the type of things we have in my drawers and other things, list some articles, and he selected at that time, I had a few books, selected six books, added them, and posted it by fast mail. In less than two weeks, I hear a call, come for an interview. I said, hey, what is happening? <laughs> you had come back or you no. were still there? Oh. This was nine months before. It could, I haven't even resigned. I, was just, wow. I just casually told him that in a year's time, you I will come, come to Ghana. Mm. So therefore, that thing was online. Because I had made my own plans that when I come to Ghana, I will be self-sufficient financially, so I don't need to work. Mm. So I was going to just serve the Lord, but not specific. <laughs> so... Within two weeks, they, I got a, a letter that, you know, here you are <laughs> coming for an interview. I've uh, forgotten the date. It should be in the book. Yeah. Uh, so, and go to South African Airways. We have already sent you a ticket. It's almost like, you know, you are being hurried like him and to your death. <laughs> Before you are aware, things were roaring. I said, ah, well, it doesn't matter if you are, somebody is paying you to go to your hometown. Would you? So mm. I guess that's how. So even as a diplomat, I should have written a, a note letter. verbal to the government if I'm leaving the oh. jurisdiction. But since we were allowed to go and shop in South Africa without that procedure, okay, you just used. I that. said, "Oh, cover the cover. I'm <laughs> going." So I just so I left there on Wednesday evening, joined the South African Airways, uh, Ghana Airways. Mm -hmm. to, to Accra. Accra, did the interview on Thursday, and then returned on Friday. Wow. Because, I mean, I was just almost yeah. like... Yeah. Now, the, 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 so the thing about the interview is, is what um, gets to me a bit. I mean, you went as far as... Let me just read that portion. Um, it says, knowing who you are on the panel by the introduction, though I knew the majority as renowned Ghanaians, I asked... Where were you to have let the institute run down as it is? Yeah. The chairman retorted, why are you saying that? And this is the chairman of GIMPA at the time no, on the panel. No, oh. it was the chairman of the Public Services Commission of Ghana. So you're asking why he allowed... Yes, because happened? he was a member of the board, but not the chairman of the board okay. of GIMPA. 
So, I mean, how did the interview go? Let me just, I mean, I mean it's better off. We, no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> the interview, those who interviewed me, mm -hmm. and they are, their report is in the appendix. Mm -hmm. Like, who is who in Ghana? In fact, when I entered the interview room, I was shocked how all these people were going to interview me. <laughs> there was Professor Kwapon, who was my vice chancellor. I mean, very, very, I mean, very. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Amonikwe, who was the minister for fi uh, uh, finance and economic planning one mm. time. I mean, vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. Mm. I couldn't believe chairman of the Public Services Commission, whom I knew because uh, he's a senior colleague. I mean, so I couldn't believe it. So I had to calm myself down <laughs> and say that. So I didn't sit down. I said, what? Are you all the ones going to interview me? Let me tell you, when I fail, one, I hold Professor Kapon <laughs> responsible because he was the one who didn't train me well because he was my vice chancellor. Until Monique, you, when I was just a kid, you were minister for finance. So if I didn't become a good economist, it's your fault. Then the chairman says, young man, sit down. <laughs> Wow. So I sat down. <laughs> and then the questions <laughs> began. The questions began. <laughs> so the beginning was, uh, ah, he says, young man, sit, sit down. down. <laughs> and then you came back with a question at him. Why he and then, No, no. Then they interviewed me. Mm -hmm. It was a normal question about management, okay. leadership, administration. Okay. That was me and my tough for all my life. So it, it wasn't, it was, a, it wasn't and they were very difficult. nice. It, I think they were good interviewers. They don't make you harassed. They were okay. make you har chatting. Free. Yo, Stephen, what do you think about mm -hmm. this? Oh, yeah. So it was fun. Then when he finished, the chairman asked me, you know, the issue I wanted to dismiss, oh, do you have anything to say before you go? <laughs> and I said, yes. And that's when I put that question to them. <laughs> they were hot. But how did he take it? I think that... The way they were shocked, first of all, they thought that it was just a matter of being impudent. So he asked me why. And I told him why I asked that question. The, the dilapidation in Akusi, in Gimpa. Mm. And when I came, I hadn't read anything about Gimpo. It was only in the evening. When I came, they were nice enough. Yeah, they they sorry, put some they... things in my... Mm -hmm. uh, they so were those, kind those, were the those were the materials yes, you got. and I okay. read them. So that's all. I didn't even check their Google. Nothing. Mm. But in reading it, their last annual report, they were attacking the government in a way which I don't think that a public service school should do. Should do. Mm. I mean, you have a way of, uh, you know, if you want to say that, you know, Kufuadu is not doing well, you say that your excellency, I think that you can do better. <laughs> you see, <laughs> that is how you say it. But if some... As you young people keep on insulting Mahama and then mm -hmm. Kufu Adu and that things, we, in our time we don't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to find a diplomatic yeah, way of nice going way. about I it. Mean, mm -hmm. So I felt that apart from the state of this institution, their language, no government who feels you will take it easy. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I asked them, so. And they were hot because the man himself talked for about, you know, five minutes before asking me to. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, another question. <laughs> it's enough. But so how long um, were you at Gimpa for? Seven. Well, first of all, let me say, just to conclude the interview, mm. I was quite surprised that within two weeks, they had offered me the job. Two weeks after the interview? Yes. They offered me the job. And I said, ah, this Is everything thing, okay? Then I, yes, mm. so there's something funny. Mm. Then I thought, that's where I became serious. All the time I was having a fun, you know. Then I said, maybe this is of God. And mm. for me, once I come to that conclusion, Mintijai. <laughs> <laughs> so you went back to resign? Or how, how did it So happen? I went back, in fact, about a month, because I was reflecting whether, you know, how did I get myself into this? this. Into this. Mm. I mean, because I was taking it <laughs> easy. So after one month, and I resigned, I said, no. Anyway, I had made up my mind to come today at the end of the year. So at the end of June, I said, 
And I was so blessed. The UNDP, when I told them that I want to resign, thank God for the service I'd given, said, no, don't resign. We will give you a package. Wow. In other words, we would rather terminate you. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, they were also laying some... Uh, he says, off. we want you to stay, but we will include you in those ones. So they, at the end of the day, they gave me a package of about $150,000, which was not a... Uh, yes, I was so grateful because I was just going to resign. He says, mm. no, don't resign. <laughs> in fact, I put in my resignation, but they said they will convert it into okay. uh, termination, termination by them. So God's hand was in this. Yes, thing. so I was then sure... And it took about six months so for it. I mean, I wanted to be a good. I mean, wherever I work, I live well. Because now I can walk to the UN at any time. And uh, with a chest, no bad feelings. Mm. I gave six months notice. Mm. They look for another person, person to replace to me. Replace and everything was cool. And I came year first of January. I started work 2000. Why <laughs> so, right And back. I stayed here for nine years. My term was five years renewable for five more years. But the second five years, I was yes. getting to 60. So it could be only four years. Okay. Wow. So we're here with Professor Emeritus Stephen Ade. Uh, we're discussing from his very first uh, book here. We're doing three of them today, The Game Pass Story. When we are back, we'll find out how it was uh, managing the system and the plans he had in mind, the reforms and all of that, the challenges as well as the success stories. It's the Writer's Blog Talk Show right here on this channel. Stay with us. to their graves with untold stories. Stories meant to change and transform lives. Don't let that happen to you. If a story isn't you, it has to come out. It must be told. Do you have an idea or a life transforming story to share? Do you want to write a book but don't know how? Let the expert writers at Review Multimedia help you out. Are you a preacher with a desire to convert your sermons into books and other readable materials? Review Multimedia offers efficient and on-time audio to text transcription services at a very affordable price. We also transcribe interviews, documentaries, etc. We offer other editorial services such as editing and proofreading. That's not all. At Review, the author and his or her book are our priority. We are the brain behind the Writer's Blog, a book review program which airs on Sunny FM and Sunny TV, meant to celebrate authors and their works, as well as promote other stakeholders in the publishing industry. We offer PR services for authors with top-notch publicists who create thrilling stories, book reviews and commentaries, organize book launches and related events to provide mileage on all meaningful media platforms for the author and their works. Call on us today to help bring every creative idea to life. For more information, call, text or send a WhatsApp message to 0552-535-036 or 0208-428-322. Send us an email, reviewmultimediagh at gmail.com. Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at review Multimedia GH. Our website is www.revealmultimediagh.com. Reveal Multimedia. Dreams come alive. Thank you so much for staying with us here. I'm here with Professor Emeritus Stephen Adai, and we are discussing from his book, The Gimpa 
story. Um, today also, uh, we get to hear more about his life. I'm sure there are so many things you didn't know about him that you've gotten to know right here on the show. The writer's blog uh, talk show also has a book club for children. Um, and we meet every last Saturday of the month. We have an author coming through to share from their books, Lessons Learned. We have an activity to go with the, with the book, and it's been so much fun these past year. And so make sure uh, you're enrolling your child. Number on your screen now, 0552-535-036. Register them, and let's have fun. The TWB Book Club, we say everything writing, everyone reading now prof before we went for the break um you told us how you said for nine years but you coming in on board what did you come to meet and what did you do about it basically i think i can summarize it because of your time mm. that i saw an institution with great potential okay and um i was such impressed that my first christmas I invited all retirees who were on the uh, pension of Gimpa, 39 of them, and I gave every top person that, uh, a kente cloth. Oh. And the ordinary people, one Dumas, uh, I mean, okay. they, and then the, the ladies half piece to feed them. Because I am one of those people who don't go to a place and malign those who have, have been, been with before. us. Mm. Mm. For me, it was closing a chapter. And opening a And, uh, you know, I did it without even asking my board. <laughs> I didn't invite them even <laughs> to honor those who have done. But it was to close the chapter. Mm. But the second thing I saw was an unrealized potential, dilapidated, yeah, I, I mean, chairs, broken okay. window, and okay. all those things. So I was shocked how they will allow such an institutional potential mm. to come that low. That low. And the third thing is that I believe that I've gotten an instrument which I can build on. Okay. So that is why the, cha the first chapter is dedicated to honoring those who were before us, mm. you know, the legacy of the forerunners. Mm -hmm. And then the second bed was not a bed of roses. There were challenges, and I've talked about, you know, the, uh, the issue of leadership. It mm -hmm. was quite obvious that the organization had faced leadership challenges, mm -hmm. demoralized staff, poor conditions of service, overstaffing of the wrong type by wrong type. <laughs> they had about less than 30, I mean, lecturers and senior members, and almost three, uh, over 300 so-called support staff i mean 300 yeah, i mean it was just crazy i say that's what i meant by the wrong type not because the people were not well, okay but yes okay. they are not the ones you build a university with or mm. institution with yes so the so, low patronage of programs. yes low programs mm. they had about 19 for only students i mean come on it was just <laughs> <laughs> a cake system mm. they had financial challenges the government was contributing 50 percent and then you know but as i said it was bent but not broken. Yeah. So that was the where we were, hmm. and there was. Uh, and then, let me tell you that I am a Christian and I believe in the Holy Spirit directing you, because the fact that I even came here was itself a direction of the Holy Spirit. That's because right. I was so casual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not your intention at all. It wasn't something you were else, looking at. Yes, even challenging those people who are interviewing <laughs> you, and still they offered yeah, me the job. But the vision I had, and I just wrote it in about less than 10 minutes because my friend was saying that whether you like it or not, I'm taking your application. Mm, Write mm, something and type and it. Type let me go. It. Mm. Imagine going to a university, applying for a top position. And that was all my vision there. That's yeah. half a page. Half a page, yes. And, and that is, it turned out exactly what I was coming to do. Can there you are, share? My, Can says share? that, and I'm reading it. Mm -hmm. My vision of Gimpa is to manage the institution to become a center of excellence of international repute mm. and the leading institution in Ghana in the areas of executive management and public administration training, including offering executive MBA, MPA, and certificates as opposed to 
purely academic ones. Wow. And unfortunately, it's happening. Mm -hmm. unfortunately, they are now reverting to purely academic ones. <laughs> Delivering a targeted and relevant range of products to well-motivated and rewarded cadre mm -hmm. of professionals and supporting staff. Mm -hmm. In that regard, one important area I would like to see Gimpa major in is leadership training including political leadership, parliamentarians, executives, regional administrators, etc., which is vital to national socioeconomic development. I anticipate reorienting of GIMPA to meet the emerging needs of a decentralized units of the local and district levels within Ghana's decentralized policy as demanded for flexible participatory training in response to emerging capacity needs of the country. In all these, training will emphasize competency-based as opposed to purely academic capacity building. This will be achieved through experience-based knowledge and skill transfer. I will vigorously mm. pursue the attainment of financial self-sufficiency of GIMPA with the view of relieving government of budgetary support mm. and rewarding staff commensurately. To that end, to the end, mm -hmm. I think the future of GIMPA lies in the delivery of relevant, pertinent, Petinent. and attractive services. Networking and training with similar institutions globally and above all, being recognized as an institution that brings value-added products and services to its clients in both the public and private sectors. How, how, and this is exactly what we achieved. How difficult or easy was it? Well, it was more, the biggest challenge was not finding the money because fortunately, with my background, uh, Barclays Bank gave me almost 3.5 million only on my signature without collateral. So the financing was not that difficult. I was able to assess an international cadre of staff, lecturers, especially since most of my work was teaching was sandwich, the executive ones. Okay. I could bring people from all over the world. So overnight, I had attained the same quality of teachers as you find in Harvard or London University or anywhere else. So that was the biggest challenge was the culture dealing with people's attitudes, trying to get them to work to a certain standard so and stopping all leakages mm. because I was going to pursue and I did pursue a zero tolerance environment. Even as they, they went to radio to insult me, even when someone stole five, they, that's how they went to television, uh, radio. That's why I heard it. He said, that, this man is a wicked man. Somebody stole only five balls of kenke without fish and he sacked him. <laughs> <laughs> so it was that. <laughs> Getting the staff. To understand. Stand. Mm. People, some of them had been here for 30 years, 25 years. Asking them that, no, now we work to certain standards. We abolish tenor. Everyone was put, no matter what you have done, if you have worked for 30 years, it didn't matter. You are on a three-year contract. If you didn't meet it, you are fired. Oh. Mm. And at first they say, ah, oh, well, you know, we are public servants. We have tenor of uh, security of job. I says, please, go and bring me your job, uh, your letter of appointment. Mm. And I says, your letter of appointment says, you can give me one month or three months notice and leave. And, uh, Let me tell you, I can also give you one month or three months notice and, and you leave. Thank you. <laughs> wow. And this is this idea that people think that public service means guarantee of job mm. is absolute nonsense. Mm. You are not. Mm. Everybody, whether you are in a private sector or public sector, your job is guaranteed only on performance. The reason why they're able to get away with it and then they can even ask for, you know, a neutrality allowance, which to mm. me is the mm. craziest thing any public servant can think of, is because they are holding the politicians hostage. If you don't you campaign against you, that's why. None of them is guaranteed a job. And the government, as an employer, can ask all teachers who think that at this time they should get 20%. 
to say you got home, stay forever. You find recruit new teachers, and they will see what they will do. They will beg for job. Hmm. And yet, you know, people, unless we come to a point whereby people's what they get is based upon their productivity, we will never move the as the cycle a country. will keep repeating. Yes. The cycle will keep repeating. So, hmm. therefore, you won't believe it that. On the meme, mm. everybody in Gimpa, including the rector, was on contract. And lo and behold, to the glory of God and to uh, uh, the shoulders of my staff, they performed. And in Gimpa, before I left, we were paying salaries about 50% higher than all the other public services, including the University of Ghana. Oh, my. Because the people have the they have the capacity. Mm, mm. It's the leadership and management and motivation. We we're able to borrow. We didn't. After two years, we asked the government to take every money from Gimpa. So for seven years, we did not ask the government of Ghana for pesua, for infrastructure, or for salary. This is awesome. And our executive masters were second to none, and we have the all. Mature student, undergraduate, Green Hill College. And we were always full. If you came to Gimpa at 4 p.m., you have nowhere to park. I had to create a big car park. Yeah. And then the students said they won't park there. <laughs> and I myself went and stood there and said that you are parking there or you are out. Because they have to walk all the way out. Yes. For a... <laughs> and so I, then I remember one lady, I think that either his... Uh, her husband or uncle was a, a kennel, so therefore he would not park there. I said, oh, me? <laughs> I was standing at the gate uh, where the, that stick that crosses. I said, you are going that way. Yes. And if you not, we'll pull you out of your car and then move your car so that the car, other cars, can go. Can go. And but we did exactly that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says he's going to tell whoever it is. He never came back. I was waiting for any <laughs> kennel to come and tell me that mm. she has a niece or a wife who is disobedient of authority. Mm. So that is it. And we made it. And if you get a copy of this book, how much is this going for? I think it's 150 Ghana CDs. 150 Ghana There is a hard copy for 350, but we haven't given it, put it on the market. On the market, yeah, okay. You have to be a special person before <laughs> I sell a copy to you. <laughs> well, there is a number on your screen um, that will get and, directly to Prof's office that you can call for that special one. But this is going uh, for 150. Bishop. Yeah. Challenge Bishop has the special Challenge copies. Bishop has it. A lot mm -hmm. of Shell, Smart Line. Okay. But publishers have them. Okay. Yeah. But is there anything you would have changed? I mean, looking back now, when it comes to your work hmm. at Gimpa, is there one thing, anything you'd have changed? I think the only thing is that the thing was so bad that I was a bit harsh and rough. It is... But, that one, I think that... <laughs> My sister came here, so I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was buga buga. It was very tough. But then, sometimes I ask, <laughs> so I'm not too sure whether if I were not that strong, <laughs> whether you, could, you would have succeeded yes. so or not. So that is one of the things. Another, probably, uh, that is beyond me. I mm. think that Gimpa was not meant to be an ordinary public university. It was meant to be, so we created a school of public administration with its own director. I think that they have collapsed it, that they have merged it with the school of leadership, governance and leadership. Mm. And I think that uh, if I were to do it again, I would ring fence the public sector training because we need it. Mm -hmm. And by public sector, I'm not talking only about the civil service and the public services. The parliamentarians. How did they? Chomoy, chomoy, chomoy. Possibly bribe their way. He has a parliamentarian. What you know? The you know, young men who are there. And when they talk, you know that, you know, these are people who need training. Mm -hmm. But who trains the Ghanaian parliamentarian? Whilst I was there, every, that's for two terms, at a mills. All the parliamentarians will come to Gimpa for one week. Oh. And that was even to me not enough. 
I think Kufuor was excellent. All through his term, every now and then his cabinet will come for a retreat facilitated by us and other things. And I think that the two things, if I had the, will have to have, I will really institutionalize this training of our parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. I mean, what they are doing there, sometimes I feel ashamed. I mean, this, these are our leaders and they fight in parliament. And you say fight you, I mouth mouth fight you. That's what they were supposed to, Jojo. They fight with blows. I mean, you can't do that. And all of them, because I don't think that they are properly trained and oriented. It's not their fault. Someone comes from the religion or Shamoise and that things, you know, <laughs> he just campaigns on the basis of NDC and MPP becomes a parliamentarian. No mm, training. Mm. And the civil service leadership, top. Gimpa was meant to, and I think that these are the things I will be less booga booga. <laughs> I will have ring fence, the training of our leaders more. Wonderful, wonderful indeed. But um, there, there are lessons also there. That's the part four uh, from chapter 14. There about as you get a copy, only 150 Ghana cities number on your screen now. Let me just run by you some of the chapters. Um, as we round up this first part of the interview, remember I told you it's a two-part interview. So part one, towards the center of excellence, we run through that. Um, part two, not a bed of roses, the overview, impudence of a sequel, which we talked about that. <coughs> part three, towards the center of excellence, an environment like no other place in Ghana. And when you get here, you see it. Um, not too bad at all. Um, creating a positive leadership brand, all those details there. Part two, the transformational process transformation action one and two leading people um so many so many of them how long did it take you to write this prof i never asked you that the, <laughs> when you come from shiromwasi and you have a problem with english shire english writing this thing didn't take me that long but uh, <laughs> getting it into a shape into the shape that's proper for about population. two years you know you go okay. and they say you are both, oh, your english is not good and then they <laughs> change this and then in the editing it they change the sense then i said no let's go back i want that my crude one you can improve my english hmm. but you can't change the sense that's right so it was back, back and, and forth, forth for about two years uh, yeah. wonderful but this is a beautiful piece you want to know how gimpa has gotten to where it is now get a copy for yourself number on your screen now prof when we are back we're going to dive straight into these powerful books as well but i like the quote here by you Where? i'll prefer to fail while attempting for the best rather than waste my life on mediocrity and he stands by that oh yeah that one 100 percent yeah. so uh, we're going for twb nuggets with baba when we are back we get to the next part of this interview is the writer's blog talk show stay with us this is TWB Nugget. Hello and welcome to TWB Nugget. We have started a new series on how to get the most out of reading a book. We talked about identifying your purpose for reading and establish that without an objective, you will not benefit from whatever you read. Today, I want to talk about stop and ponder. Take notes and write down ideas. If you are just going to read word for word, page by page, you are not going to learn a lot from your reading. It is vital to stop and reflect on the information you are gathering from the book in order to understand how it can be applied to your life. Don't just skim through the book or try to read as fast as possible. Remember your purpose for reading. You are not reading the book for the sake of reading. And you are not in competition with anyone. The purpose of reading books is so that you can learn the most from them. So, take your time. Jot down ideas, quotes, principles, etc. that can be easily applied to your life. And that is our tip for today. Tune in next week for another key tip on how to get the most out of reading a book. I'm Bob Okran and bye for now. 
Hi children, are you ready for this year's edition of the Kiddie Book and Crafts Fair? Yeah! Well, the Kiddie Book and Crafts Fair is finally here. Challenge Enterprises of Ghana and the Writer's Blog brings you the 2022 edition of the Kiddie Book and Crafts Fair. This is a gathering of children of diverse ages from different schools and backgrounds in one place. There will be art and craft, reading, writing, intellectually stimulating games, audiobook listening sessions, and a lot and lot of fun. Date is 4th August 2022. It's a holiday! Call now and register your children. Parents, you are not left out in this edition. There will be parental workshop for available and willing parents. So go on and register today. 0208-428-322. That is 0208-428-322. What's more, there will be several competitions with lots and lots of prizes to be won. Don't miss out. The Kiddie Book and Crafts Fair 2022. Creativity, knowledge, power. And that's a very powerful um, tip there from Baba Okran. I do hope you're going to take note of that. But that's how we wrap up this one, Prof, the Gimpa story. Your last words when it comes to this particular book. Well, for those who buy the book, they should read chapter 16, what could have been done differently about relations with staff and authorities. Okay. But I would like to end with the positive things. Mm. I have a dozen transferable concepts. If you are going to change the public sector, First of all, you must make sure you have the mandate of the government and the authorities because so. they will attack you later on. Mm. You need a supportive governing council because okay. without my board, I couldn't have made it. Okay. You must always insist on standards and quality staff and their performance and the rigorous appraisal system. I believe that in Ghana, public sector managers must aim at not only going to government with a ball in hand, but becoming financially autonomous. Thank you. Super indeed. Uh, we are back next week with the part two of this particular, you know, interview. And we will be discussing two of Prof's books, Managing Your Life, and then, of course, Living by Strategy. We are back next week, God willing. I'm Vicky Amwa. Hi. I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading, but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes these books talk about. Every week, I speak to various authors who are behind life-transforming books, as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on the station this and every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Thank you for watching The Writer's Blog on this channel. If you want to sponsor, partner, advertise or have your book reviewed on the show, call or send a text or WhatsApp message to or send an email to follow us on social media. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia. Join us next week for another exciting edition. The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind.